Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel where we do painting tutorials. Today I have this uh, little sunset scenery of birds on top of these dry green branches which I thought would be perfect for autumn. So I start by taping down my paper with masking tape inside my pencil box, the reason being, well, I have a tiny disc and it will not fit elsewhere. I start by coloring the bottom with some cadmium orange about one fourth up the page and I'm just using medium pressure since these pencils are very saturated and vibrant on their own so I don't really need to layer them or use too much pressure in order to get nice vibrant results. I use a bit less and less pressure as I move up so that way it can transition smoothly into my next color which is a dark chrome yellow. Obviously any light orange or dark yellow, even, I don't know, yellow ochre will work for this. I'm just building up a gradient and I use my yellow to about halfway up the page and again I use less and less pressure as I move up because I'm going to finish this off with just some Taylor blue and I don't want my yellow mixing with the blue and giving me a green. With the blue, I use medium pressure on the top of the page and less and less pressure as I approach the yellow. That way the top is going to be nice and saturated and the middle section is going to transition softly between my two colors and give me a nice looking gradient. Then I take my watercolor brush and I blend from light to dark. So my lightest section in this case is the middle. So I start from that light yellow towards the cadmium orange, blending horizontally left to right. And yes, you could alternatively start from where the blue was applied the lightest, work your way to the top and then do the oranges. I just uh, proceed this way because it's more comfortable from where I'm standing. What's important is to make sure you clean your brush when you switch from the orange to the blue, that way they don't contaminate each other. I go a couple of times over each just to make sure the pencil markings have fully dissolved and then I go one to two times between uh, the middle section where those two meet just to make sure I don't have any rough edges from the blending that it is all smooth. Once it has dried, I take my black pencil, I sharpen it to a nice point, that way I can reach off those teeny tiny branches and I start coloring it in from the outsides, from the outlines towards the inside. I just find that this method is what is most comfortable to me. If drawing is not your thing, you can find a traceable over at my Patreon page, Sunshine Arts, and also we offer full-time tutorials and other nice things over there, so if you'd like to check that out, you can find it linked down below, along with all of the supplies used in the video and the reference picture I used as inspiration for this painting. I'm just following the pencil lines, and like with any tree sketch, I like to start with a thick, tree trunk and then make the branches that come out of it thinner and thinner. That's just your general row of thumb whenever drawing trees. You won't typically get a branch on the crown of the tree that is thicker than the trunk or the branches that it is coming from. Just make them as crooked as you want with as many branches popping out of those branches as you want. I'm going for an autumn look, so I think this is really going to um, give me that uh, feeling of autumn, of migrating birds, and yeah, you get the idea. I make sure, again, my pencil has a nice fine point, because uh, the birds are very tiny, and to draw a bird, I just do a tiny circle, then a bigger circle under it, and then some straight lines coming out of that for the tail. And if the bird is sitting sideways, then I do a straight line diagonally and do a tiny half circle, a bigger half circle, and leave the line that I initially made for a tail. I'm just keeping very simple and loose bird shapes for this and fill in any um, big gaps or empty spaces where you can see the orange and blue peeking through, I cover them with my black. 
I thought I'd add some more branches coming from the top right angle because it was looking a bit too bare for my likings. Just something to uh, balance out the composition. That's a fancy way of putting things into words, but yeah, it was just looking a bit too bare and lonely. So I add some more branches for maybe a tree on the side that's peeking into our frame. Then I sketch some ground on the bottom, just random doodles, random scribbles that I am going to activate with my watercolor brush. I like to keep my brush pretty much on the dry side. I like to keep my brush pretty much on the dry side, just enough to activate that black. And I use a tapping motion on top of the ground. That way I get a bit more texture and it looks like, I don't know, maybe um, trees in the distance, maybe a grassy field, I don't know. And then I lightly go over the thicker areas of the trunk and the branches just enough to make that black really pop on top of this bright background we have going on. Lastly, I slowly peel off the tape in the opposite direction to avoid the paper tearing on me. I like to give a very special thank you to my patrons for the month of October. Thank you all for watching. If you got any value out of this video, please let me know by liking, commenting, and if you have not already, please consider subscribing to the channel. I really like to reach 20,000 subscribers, it would mean a lot to me. We'll see each other in the next video. Bye-bye.